Welcome to the latest edition of HCTV. The concept of shadow and directorship has its genesis in Section 9 of the Corporations Act. Section 9 provides that an officer of a corporation is a director or secretary of a corporation or someone who has the uh, capacity to significantly affect the decision making in respect to the corporation or someone who has the capacity to significantly affect the financial standing of the corporation or a person in accordance with whose instructions a duly appointed board is accustomed to act. Accordingly, it's possible to be a director of a corporation without being formally appointed to the role. Some of the most blatant examples of Phoenix behaviour have involved individuals who weren't, involved, who weren't formally appointed to the role of director. It is, it, is in, it is consistent with principle that a body corporate can be treated as a de facto or shadow director. A company or an individual who is a shadow director will be required to comply with the duties of a director under, under the Corporations Act, including the statutory fiduciary duties in section 180 to 183 of the Corporations Act. A shadow director can also be made liable for insolvent trading of the corporation. Financiers can find themselves transgressing into the realm of shadow, shadow directorship. Notwithstanding these provisions have been around for some time, liquidators are still encountering examples of professional advisors, such as lawyers, accountants and consultants, crossing the th threshold from professional advisor to shadow director. Indeed, it might be anticipated that more professional advisors might fall foul of these provisions if they take a two hands-on approach to assisting their clients with the economic challenges presented by the current COVID-19 environment. Thanks for watching. See you next time.